In the last 10 years, we've seen many tremendous advancements in technology, like the Mars Curiosity rover, self-driving cars, and metal 3D printing. These technologies have reshaped our knowledge about outer space, redesigned our most common mode of transportation, and revamped additive manufacturing. Also in the last 10 years, we've seen some of the largest scale cyber attacks in the history of mankind. In 2017, Equifax, one of the largest credit bureaus in the US, reported that an application vulnerability on their website led to a data breach which exposed about 150 million customers. And the list of data attacks which compromise the privacy of everyday users goes on. Multinational corporations like Uber and Marriott have all fallen victim. Even the United States government's Office of Personnel Management was attacked. As if that, in and of itself, is not bad enough, the financial impact of these attacks is monstrous. Accenture recently reported that cybercrime cost organizations nearly $12 million more in 2017 than in 2016, and that there are about 130 security breaches per year. That's approximately three breaches per day, with the average attack costing about $2.4 million. It gets worse. Time Magazine estimated that the Equifax hack, which affected nearly half of the US population, cost upwards of $5 billion. For those of you in the back, that was billion with a B. Do you know what I could do with $5 billion? I could buy 25,000 Tesla Roadsters at $200,000 each. But companies, organizations, and people are not the only entities susceptible to cyber attack. Cyber physical systems, known as CPSs, like water treatment plants, the power grid, IoT devices, and any other networked physical system are vulnerable. CPS attacks, which tend to be larger in scale and more devastating than data breaches, raise the stakes by endangering the lives of all involved. This includes humans, wildlife, and the environment. Let me explain. If your identity gets stolen due to a data breach, though a mild to moderate inconvenience, it's generally rectifiable. And you can personally guard against this by freezing your credit or investing in a credit monitoring service. If, on the other hand, the US power grid goes down due to a cyber attack, all of our lives will be disrupted, especially vulnerable populations like those on life support. Consider Puerto Rico and how completely devastated the island's power grid was after the hurricane. A substantial CPS attack could yield much of the same results. But these scenarios are not hypothetical. There have been several very real CPS attacks in the last few years. One, which threatened global security in August of 2017, was a sophisticated malware called Triton. It targeted petrochemical facilities in the Middle East via the infiltration of a CPS safety system. The Triton attack was ultimately unsuccessful because it triggered the accidental plant shutdown, which led to its discovery. You see, CPS safety systems are used for emergency shutdowns of industrial processes. Tampering with them could result in physical damage to machines, lead to an unstable facility state, and cost human lives. Think of it like this. You drive to a shady part of town because they have the best tacos. <laughs> I am not here to judge. <laughs> but while you're inside, your car gets tampered with in the parking lot. So now you've got your food and you get in your car to head home, but as you pull out, you notice that your car's brakes, aka your emergency shutdown, suddenly make the car speed up. This unexpected behavior would certainly lead to chaos on the road. Except, of course, if you drive in Atlanta, in which case you'll blend right in. In the CPS industry, there is a wide open research problem surrounding the development of a reliable method for identifying bad actors who try to compromise critical systems. To add a layer of complexity to this, in the last few decades, robots have been increasingly incorporated into cyber physical systems. They're used in factories for automation, in hospitals for telesurgery, and even on farms for harvesting. 
The prevalence of robotics and CPSs has grown so much, it's been asked whether or not they could be hacked. And the answer is yes. But even though they are vulnerable, all hope is not lost. Cyber attacks on physical systems are a large-scale global problem. But we have tools from IT security that can help. And I believe that one step in the right direction is the Honeybot. Historically, robotic systems have not been built with an emphasis on security. Their main purpose has been to complete a specific objective, like drive from point A to point B, or perform a swarm algorithm. But there are three components that unite almost every class of robots. Sensors are like a robot's eyes and ears. They enable it to perceive its surroundings. Controllers are like the robot's brain. They receive sensor data as input, then determine what to do next. Oftentimes, that next thing to do is to perform an action, hence the actuators. The differentiating factor of the Honeybot, the secret sauce, if you will, is that we want it to be attacked. When attacked, the controller knows, and in real time, queries system response models that take into account sensor device physics and the current robot state to send back fake system responses while the real robotic actuators do nothing. The Honeybot is the first hybrid interaction honeypot that performs safe actions and simulates unsafe actions to fool attackers while logging everything. In other words, when attackers connect to the Honeybot and act like regular users performing safe commands that will not harm the robot or the environment, the Honeybot will respond normally. But once any malicious commands are detected, the Honeybot switches into simulation mode, unbeknownst to the attacker, and sends spoof responses to keep them thinking their villainy is successful. Meanwhile, system administrators are alerted to their presence and have record of their every move. So why does this matter? Well, imagine you become deathly ill with a very rare disease and require surgery immediately. But the world's best specialist is indefinitely stuck in New York. Fortunately for you, your local hospital is set up for telesurgery with the Honeybot. Telesurgical robots are used in remote surgeries and allow doctors to operate on patients when they can't be in the same location. The Honeybot for surgery would ensure commands sent from your doctor in New York reach you in Atlanta as intended. And if an attacker is able to take over your surgery, the Honeybot will stop the procedure, alert the doctors and network administrators, all while keeping the attacker thinking the surgery is ongoing. That way, data can be collected for hacker prosecution and for making future telesurgery safer. I hope you now see that the power grid, water treatment plants, and other industrial facilities, entities once thought of as impenetrable physical systems, are vulnerable and the consequences of CPS attacks on them are global and far-ranging. It is my belief that the confluence of robotics and cybersecurity could lead the way to making these facilities more difficult to target. And as a CPS security researcher, that is exactly what I aim to do. Thank you. From me and Dex. <laughs>